Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this week's show is all about angling organization. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. This week's show, we're kind of taking a little bit different direction. We're talking about the management and the organization of your equipment, going beyond just putting lures in a tackle box. We're talking about organizing everything inside your boat, your truck, trailering, and beyond that. Definitely important stuff, Troy. Leads to effective time management on the water, mm -hmm. whether you're fishing with kids or you're in a tournament, and helps you protect your investment, whether it's tackle, boat, what have you. Yeah, and that's important as well. So let's dive right into it. Here are some things to help you be better prepared and better organized. Angling organization can be the difference between hero and zero. It's actually a nice little, a nice little deck in the side, the way this is laid out. James got a fish. Ooh. Oh. Some anglers go to extremes, spending countless hours sorting baits and labeling boxes. And there are some of us whose boxes are tangled chandeliers of treble hooks and melted plastic. The sad truth is, if you can't quickly access what you need to catch fish, potential bites can evaporate in the blink of an eye. Looking back, most of us started fishing with an old school hard sided tackle box. Still great for kids or packing a bunch of baits for a multi-species adventure, but more anglers are going new school, using tackle bags that come with molded plastic utility boxes, which allow a modular approach to organizing baits by fish species, season, bait color, size, running depth, or action. And new waterproof utility box designs help keep baits rust-free for years of use. When it comes to soft plastics, new speed bag designs and simple Tupperware containers work great to organize baits in their retail packaging. What's the saying? A clean boat is a happy boat? New boat designs, too, have made it easier to stay organized, like carrying lots of technique-specific rods below deck and out of harm's way. Many feature ample compartments, drawers, cargo netting, you name it. And products like those from Excel Outdoors fit right onto your vehicle or boat trailer to greatly increase payload and organization. Same goes for hard water. Cargo racks, auger carriers, and near bulletproof storage boxes integrate seamlessly on ice machines. New fish house designs excel for keeping ice anglers organized too. Ice combos now feature flasher, sonar, and GPS all in one easy to carry pack. Underwater cameras are smaller, powerful and fit in a jacket pocket. Aircraft grade aluminum fish finder mounts keep your electronics safe and where you can see them. And keeping track of your waypoints has never been easier. Thanks to slots that allow backing up your favorite spots on an inexpensive SD card. Yes, that one's especially critical. As you can see, there's no excuse not to get more organized. Seems like everybody's doing it and catching more fish as a result. Fine tune cranking is the key to catching big walleyes in current. It really is incredible how things are advancing so fast. Everything is getting smaller and faster, not only in electronics, but we're looking at equipment organization in fishing. Small little backpacks, little tackle boxes that are like technique specific, fish specific. It's truly revolutionizing the way we fish. No doubt, Troy. And now I'm carrying around GPS, high definition mapping via apps on my phone. Underwater cameras, too, have gotten smaller. They used to be the size of a refrigerator. We'd drag them around on the ice. Now they've got, you know, a reel on them. You can coil off the line, keep that managed, and mm -hmm. stuff it in your jacket pocket. Very cool. This Underwater Minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. So what's with the fish? They just ain't biting. Even for the best anglers, fishing can get tough at times, no matter where you fish or what species you pursue. On good days, fish may try to chew the paint off your lure. On tough days, it's more like watching paint dry. One thing for sure, you can't force fish into making attitude adjustments. Yet even under the toughest conditions, you can adjust your tactics to match their attitudes. Lure selection is key. Some lures are great for covering water and triggering strikes from aggressive fish, casting spinner baits or rattle baits for bass, 
trolling crankbaits for walleye, or burning bucktails for muskies are all good examples. Fishing quickly allows more fish to see your lures, increasing your odds of catching them if they are willing to chase them down and strike. If they don't respond to aggressive tactics, however, it's time for a change. This usually means fishing a smaller lure at a slower pace to tempt reluctant fish into biting. You may think you choose the right lure for the day, but in the end, it's the fish who decide. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. You know, Troy, one of the challenges of being in the Angling Buzz region is we're multi-species anglers. There are a lot of moving parts. We're fishing muskies, walleyes, brown bass, panfish, trout, salmon. It's a lot of stuff to keep organized. Yeah, it's a lot of equipment, not just one fish. You're kind of timesing it, you know, up to eight, you know, the amount of stuff that you need. So we're going around the region, some of the top pros to share with you some of their tips and some of their tricks and strategies to be better prepared, better organized, to help you catch fish and save time. Hey guys, Keith Combs here, and I want to give you a little tip that really helps me when uh, I'm, I'm in full-blown tournament mode. Like, we're fixing to go into the Elite Series this year. It's organization. You know, we have uh, a limited amount of time on our hands, and um, it's very important for me to, to know what my inventory is on tackle, on the things that I use the most, and, um, you know, it just makes me more efficient on the water. But really how I do it, it's pretty simple. Um, just say, for instance here, this is... Uh, one of my favorite boxes, my Strike King Rage Cross. I have everything by color. You know, the main thing that I've had, I've struggled with over the years is just narrowing down my colors. You know, I, I want to pick uh, some contrasting colors so I have options, but I don't want to carry everything in the world. You know, so I pick my favorite colors like my June bugs, whites, green pumpkins, Okeechobee Craw, something with some red. So I got a wide variety. I can keep my full inventory in one box. I can see when I'm running low, like I'm running low on, on green punk and stuff. So I know when I go home, I need to restock. I need to make a call of Strike King. But that's just kind of how I do it. I do it the same way for all my tackle, my jigs, you know, my worms, my uh, Strike King Pure Poisons, my jig trailers, everything's done the same way. Narrow it down to your favorite colors and, uh, and uh, make, make it work for yourself. I fish out of a tiller boat. I've got three kids who love to fish. I've got friends. I love the layout of a tiller because it's wide and it's open. I fish bass and muskies off the front. This is walleye world really in the back. This is mission control also when I'm running the boat for other people. So I like to have everything right at my fingertips. Starting with the electronics, I've got a Humminbird Helix 12 with Lake Master mapping, just an awesome unit. I've got my phone on a ram mount so I can stay in touch with friends who are on the water and family. But below this, in the Pro Guide series, you've got these great drawers. So I've got 
you know, my ripping wraps, I've got my jigging wraps, I've got extra cotter pins, I've got extra sunglasses, I've got a thermocell for when the mosquitoes are out and I'm fishing with kids. But everything is right here and organized right where I can get it. I know where everything is. Down here I've got tools. I don't leave home without a hook cutter in case something bad happens. A couple sets of pliers, a hemostat, extra line, live bait substitutes. If I turn behind me, I've got a talon that's good to 12 feet for boat positioning. I do a lot of casting and pitching for walleyes. I've got a vantage here and a four stroke that sips on gas. So between these two, I can back troll, I can forward troll, and, and it's wickedly effective all from the tiller position. In the front, I've got spot lock via a Minn Kota Altera that, hey, I set it from right here. It stows and deploys by itself. So the benefits of running a tiller, man, this is mission control. And for multi-species fishing in this part of the world, they're tough to beat. Hey, I'm Tony Roach, professional guide. When it comes to organization, it's the name of the game to putting more fish in the boat. How I organize my equipment is pretty simple. I love using these waterproof stow trays. I put all my tackle in it, so whether it's crankbaits, uh, components, sinkers, I store them in there. It's a no-brainer. It, it keeps your stuff dry and it lasts a lot longer. Now when it comes to components, it can be a little bit tricky. I like to store mine in plastic containers. I label each one. That way if it tips over, you're not going to spill beads or hooks everywhere. When it comes to sinkers, I like to organize my sinkers from slip sinkers to bottom bouncers. Everything's in one. That way that lead isn't contaminating the rest of your baits. And then of course these little tackle tamers, I carry some of these around. I love to pre-tie my baits. These tackle tamers are a no-brainer. Hey, when it comes to organization, I can't stress it enough. It pays big, big dividends when you're on the water day in and day out. I think I have to uh, step up my organizational game after watching that. It's a constant battle for all mm. of us. Hey, let's go out into the field right now, check in on the bites throughout the Angling Buzz region. Hey everybody, Jared Houston with fellow guide Sherpa, Houston's Guide Service reporting for the Twin Ports for a quick minute. Uh, Lake Superior has been fantastic, trolling with stick baits off planer boards for cohos and, and uh, trout. It's been, you know, a fantastic bite, as well as the St. Louis River Estuary, where we're getting a lot of walleye slow trolling with worm harnesses or some shallow running cranks. That 1.5 to 2 miles an hour has been key. Um, as far as the lakes, they've been decent. Sherpa's been camping on the reservoirs north of Duluth. Tell us what's going on. I've had a great bite trolling uh, right out in the middle of the lake, midday, finding any kind of weed beds. If you got something with a perch pattern, you're gonna catch some fish right now. Um, then right in the evenings, we've been going right with a jig and a minnow. Any kind of structure you can find, get some weeds, some uh, sharp breaks, you're gonna find some fish. Right, so find weeds, you'll find fish. Our next report, we're going to the Alexandria region with Joe Sakura, where the walleyes have moved to the outside of the weed edges. Uh, we're still catching a lot of 15, 20 inch walleyes. They have moved out of the weeds predominantly and they're on the outside weed edge right now. And uh, if they're spread out across an area and they're very active, nothing beats pulling a spinner rig through there. Um, but uh, I've been finding a lot of concentrated fish pockets in inside turns, points, or with, with uh, pretty steep contours. So it's real hard to beat um, a Lindy rig for that presentation. Very slow and precise uh, technique. Um, I'll just show you a little bit about my, uh, what I use here for a Lindy rig. Um, a number six hook, you can use it with a bead or without, and then uh, about a four foot, five foot, six pound line. Uh, you can use fluorocarbon or like a XT mono is fine too. Um, and then just down to a simple swivel and a half ounce weight. What that half ounce weight is going to do for you is allow you to stay very vertical. Uh, you don't want to be 100 feet behind the boat when you're fishing a very precise area. So whatever I'm reading on the locator, hopefully a bunch of fish, I want to be pulling that bait right through them. The more you can see fish on your locator and just stay over those fish real slow with a presentation like this, uh, you're going to catch a lot more of them. It's hard to beat the good old Lindy rig in the heat of summer for walleyes. And coming up after this break, we have more Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, 
shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack. Cargo trunk. Bucket caddy. Jaws of Ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy. Fishing game boards and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel Outdoors. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. We're continuing our Buzz Bite reports right now with Jason Mitchell on Devil's Lake. Devil's Lake continues to fish really well and uh, it's been a great year so far. Probably the only thing that's been slowing it down some days is that there's some strong wind and a lot of fronts have been coming through all summer long. But on Devil's Lake, these fish are transitioning a touch deeper so since we're finding fish anywhere from say six to all the way up to nine, 10 feet of water. We're starting to pull crankbaits a lot more. The Samuel Hornet's been really good. Jointed shatter ups have been working really good. The other trend has been pulling bottom bouncers and spinners along some of the emerging weed lines that are starting to pop up. And chartreuse, bright orange, hot perch looking colors have been really, really good this year along with white. But just a spinner and number four, number five size blade with either a half crawler or a full crawler fishing along the edge of the emerging weeds have been fishing well. Kind of seeing a trend here, pulling spinners with crawlers in the weed beds for walleyes. Our next report, we're joining Bro on Leech. The water temperatures are reaching low 70s and the mayflies are starting to hatch. That makes me think night crawlers and bottom bouncing, but if you're not into bottom bouncing, hanging on to a two ounce weight and a spinner, try going light, light bottom bouncing. Little uh, spinner heads like this thumper head from Northland, put a chunk of crawler on it, get up to speed 0.9 to 1.2 mile an hour, pitch it out behind the boat. Another thing that's working on leech, plastics. This is a core paddle bait from Northland. That's been working. Also, I always have slip bobbers. Not the giant ones. These are the light bite slip bobbers and uh, just put a little jig head on there and I use that with a leech or a full crawler and let it drift through. The center lake rock piles are where it's at. That's a hot spot. 8 to 12 feet of water during the day and then at night they move up shallow, 4 to 6 feet. We've had a lot of wind, a lot of storms and mayflies, but the walleyes are biting. Yeah, that's some great info from Bro. You know, when they're on spinners, they're on live bait, just throwing that little jig like he mentioned from Northland Tackle can make a difference. Our next report is from Billy Rosner on Lake Vermilion. Out doing some top water fishing today. Uh, absolutely my favorite time of year. As far as top water goes, uh, check out your Rapala top water. Storm makes some good top waters too. But really having a blast today. Top water and plastic for the bass. I'm gonna get this girl back here. Uh, the walleye fishing, the start thinking transition, and we're getting into that summer pattern now where you wanna utilize those early morning hours and those later evening hours for your fishing. Uh, the live bait rigs are working really well, like a 42, 40 inch leader. I like that lime green bead, and then uh, a crawler, and then get yourself a worm blower and shoot a little air in it. You give that crawler a little lift and that can make all the difference. Trolling, lead core, your number five. Chad wraps are producing, jigging wraps are working also. Uh, Northern Pike out on your deeper weed lines and your rocky points. Our next report, we're going up to North Central Wisconsin with Justin Geike. It's one of my favorite times for big trophy walleyes. This slob here is just an absolute perfect example of what's happening here in the area. Fishing has been fantastic, but the reason fishing's so good right now is we got our first real good hot spell of weather. We've had a ton of rain, but here we are with 80 and 90 degree temperatures. And for me, what it does is it schools up fish in really easy to find locations. Post-spawn walleyes will often move off the shallow flats in that five to six feet of water. We get this big hot spell and then they push down to the break into the deeper water for their summer patterns. 
where I was finding them in six to eight feet of water. Now I'm finding them in 10 to 18 feet of water. When they move off there, the structure gets dissipated. It's an excellent time to cover water with trolling as a tactic. I've been trolling at two miles an hour and using a number seven shatter at to emulate the perch in this particular body of water. Our final report, we're heading over to Michigan with Captain Ben Wolf. It's late June. We have some fantastic opportunities for fishermen all across the state. The biggest mayflies of the year are out right now. These are the hexagenia. These are the granddaddies of all. And fly anglers are loving having these big bugs around and are fishing for big brown trout, rainbow trout in the evening hours. And for the bass anglers, a walking bait with a little chicken feather on the back is also a great opportunity for topwater bass. For walleye anglers on Saginaw Bay, the walleyes have started to migrate out a little bit deeper. And so pulling spoons at a slightly higher speed almost three miles an hour, two and a half to three miles an hour can really pay dividends for those walleyes. On the western side of the state, we have Lake Michigan. Anglers seeking salmon are seeing some great action for two, three, and four-year-old king and coho salmon. The king salmon that are in the four-year class are 20 pounds and bigger, some of them, which is a great sign for July and August and as we get into the salmon run into the rivers. The fishing and the weather are both heating up in Michigan, especially if you're interested in some great salmon fishing in the middle of July called Sportfish Michigan. Coming up after this break, we have a cool product segment and our technique of the week as Angling Buzz continues. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be. Until I added smooth moves to my boat, its four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Now it's time for our cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Today's show is about angling organization and these products definitely will help you be more organized. We're going to start with some of the tackle bags from Mills Fleet Farm and they work in conjunction with Plano boxes. So if you're a multi-species fisherman, you're going out for the day, you can have a bass box, walleye box, panfish box. They move in and out easily. Uh, a couple different sizes, you know, this one's nice if you shore fish, you fish panfish, trout, a little bit smaller box, you can throw it in your backpack or just carry it as is. And from Rapala, the pedestal tool holder, this is pretty cool. Two essentials of any boat, super line scissors, a pair of pliers, you can keep it together in an easy to reach place, especially just fishing on the front of your boat. You don't have to, you don't have to dig for these really, really cool, the pedestal tool holder from Rapala. And a great way to keep your soft plastics organized, well, Ziploc bags. If you ever seen inside my boat or seen anything posted about about my organization, you've seen I keep a lot of my soft plastics, pretty much all of them in Ziploc bags. A couple different sizes, you know, different storage bags, quarts and gallons. I use gallons primarily. Keep your stick baits, worms, uh, swim baits organized and all together. You can label them. Uh, they are fantastic and helps keep them dry as well from Ziploc. 
Front and center here we have the Gamagatsu G-Box. This looks like a normal storage box, except when you open it up, you can adjust this both vertically and horizontally. So if you have different rigs and different needs, this thing is pretty flexible. So you can adjust these like that, and then there's a lot of different slots for organizing it horizontally. It's pretty cool from Gamagatsu, the G-Box. If you're a walleye fisherman, you probably know the pain of dealing and storing and managing rigs and leaders. Northland Tackle has you covered with their tackle tamers. This is a smaller version, you just wrap your leaders right around this for easy storage and management. And also, for your bottom bouncers, this is pretty cool, this is the bigger version of the tackle tamer. You throw your bottom bouncers, you store them inside of here, you wrap your snells, your leaders around the outside. Really, really fantastic, both are from Northland Tackle. On my right, from Yeti, well you know it's Yeti, you know it's quality. This is their new hopper. There's a couple different models available. You have secure tie downs for attaching this. It's lightweight, easy to carry, holds ice literally for days from the insulation technology. 100% leak proof zipper. This is fantastic. This is the Hopper 30 from Yeti. All of these products are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm store as well as fleetfarm.com. Another thing I do want to mention is the Excel Outdoors cargo trunk. There's a few different versions available. You can easily attach this to any boat trailer, back your truck, an RV. It's extremely versatile, very durable, a great way to add extra storage space for things that you might not want to store in your boat or your truck. Check it out from Excel Outdoors. And right now, it's time for our technique of the week. We're going bottom bouncing for walleyes. There's a fish right there. We're on Devil's Lake. You know, it's been really hot and it's been really still and calm. And this water really warms up like it is here. I don't think you can go wrong. I think the big mistake is fishing too slow. Burn with them. Use speed to trigger fish. But boy, I mean, those, those fish, I mean, they're going to let you know. They, they, when they hit these, they jump on it. There's not a doubt in your mind that you've got a bite. I mean, these fish, they hurt your wrist when they hit. What I found is if you have good circulation in the water, a lot of times these fish will be up in shallow water right underneath the algae blooms and a bottom bouncer and a spinner is one of the best ways to cover water and trigger these fish because basically this bottom bouncer works as like a great big weed guard and leave this here free to catch fish and, and a lot of times when you get these situations you can't go wrong just burning these spinners, fishing fast, cover water, a lot of times you can catch a lot of fish doing this. That's a really tried and tested technique for walleyes that has been proven successful over decades. No doubt, Troy, it can be like a vacuum cleaner at times for walleyes. And I think what's interesting is a lot of anglers are turning away from live bait using artificial substitutes on the same rig. Hey, on next week's show, we've got a real winner for you. We're hanging out with the musky mavericks. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And as always, we want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. And the website, of course, anglingbuzz.com. All of our articles, videos, guide reports to help you catch fish right now. And you can also enter our sweepstakes sponsored by Mills Fleet Farm for an awesome weekend up on Lake Vermilion of fishing and fun. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you at the boat ramp. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week. <laughs>